There's this story from Zeno. Zeno's the founder of Stoicism. He had this social anxiety. Someone had said he was sort of stubby, he had weird legs, kind of a weird appearance. Um, and he had this mentor, this philosopher mentor named Crates. And Crates realized that Zeno was too self-conscious. He cared too much about what other people thought about him. And he thought people were looking at him all the time. So he, sent, he asked him to carry this large cauldron of soup across town. And he knew that Zeno would be mortified at the idea. So he caught Zeno kind of like trying to sneak around, take it on these back roads or do it at night. So Crates was following him. And right as he was in front of some people, he, he hit the pot with his, with his staff and it spilled the soup all over Zeno. And of course, Zeno was all embarrassed and he ran off. And he said, you know, where are you going, my friend? Don't you realize nothing has happened to you? And his point was that uh, no, no harm is actually befallen you just because some people are looking at you at you or you know none of these people know who you are they don't care that they're, they're immediately going to forget this event so i think what, what the stoics realize is that one naturally we're self-conscious so they're not denying that you care what other people think or how you're being seen but they actively practiced not being shamed by these things cato for instance would walk around bareheaded, he would walk around barefooted, he wore ratty clothes, even though he could afford the finest garments. And he did this because he was trying to make himself immune, he's trying to inoculate himself against caring about what other people think. And so I think the real benefit of that, if you look at Cato's life, is that towards the end, when everyone was so afraid of Julius Caesar, when everyone was going along with what Julius Caesar wanted to do, Cato was the one who was comfortable standing alone. He was the comfortable being the odd man out. He was comfortable, you know, people being mad at him and saying, why can't you go along to get along? Why are you being like this? Why are you being such an asshole? He had the strength and the confidence to do the right thing when everyone else was afraid because he'd actively practiced not caring so much about what other people think. So look, I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying I don't catch myself doing it too, but it's something you work on and you get better at. And so it's important to realize that stoicism then is a practice, it's a process, it's not just a bunch of ideas, it's something you engage in the way that Crates was for Zeno and of course the way that Cato was uh, in his philosophical practice as well. So a couple years ago, I got to know this guy in Austin named Richard Overton. And for a while, Richard was the second oldest man in the world. He was born in 1906. Richard Overton was born when Theodore Roosevelt was president, which is pretty friggin' insane if you think about it. But what was so great about Richard is that he just lived his life. And this is actually the street that's now called Richard Overton Avenue. I learned a couple things from Richard. I think one I learned, it wasn't like he was dying to live longer. Like he just was, right? 112 years was plenty. He sort of puts this radical life extension stuff in, in perspective, you know? There wasn't any craving for Richard. He just showed up every day. This is, this is Richard. This, this tree he planted in his front yard here is 70 years old. He planted a tree in his yard that lived for 70 years and he was there for all of it. But he would sit on that porch every morning and he would smoke cigars and drink whiskey and eat, eat ice cream. He was surrounded by neighbors and friends and he knew everyone in the neighborhood. It's just awesome. But I remember one time I asked Richard and I said, uh, you know, Richard, how do you live to be 112? Do you just take it like day by day? Is that the secret? And he said, no, to live to this age, you, you just take it day by night. And to me, that's kind of an insight worthy of the Stoics. Like you can't get too far ahead of yourself. You can't get carried away. You can't take things too personally. You can't take them too seriously. You just got to seize the moment in front of you. You just got to live. And so when Marcus says you could leave life right now, he doesn't mean you are going to live life right now. I mean, hopefully you'll live to be 100. Hopefully, you know, you'll live to be 200. Who, who knows? But the point is, while you're here, you should live as if you could leave life right now. You should live a life that, that matters, that's not all about you. And you should take it not even day by day, but take it day by night. Just take each problem, each good thing, each bad thing, as it comes, one at a time, and live it for all it's worth. I was at the airport. I basically had like four flights in a row that seemed like they were going to be delayed. And so it was like, you know, rushing across Heathrow, it was rushing across the airport in Budapest, it was rushing across the airport in Dallas. And I was like, I just didn't want to miss these flights. And obviously I wanted to get home, I'd been gone for a while, so that, that was a part of it. But it's interesting what our anxiety is about these things. Like, I was suffering 
as if I had missed the flights before I had actually missed them. That's one of Seneca's quotes. He says, you suffer more in imagination than in reality. And it's like, I was actually borrowing the suffering. I was like suffering in advance before it happened, like an idiot. And then the crazy part was that it didn't end up happening. I made the flights, right? And so it's like, why did I do that to myself? It was so nuts. So I think what the, what the Stoics realize is that, look, there are things that, that are unfun. There, there is things that go the wrong way in life. But being anxious about them solves nothing, right? It's going to happen whether you are worried about it or not, right? So um, sure, you rush to make the flight, but what you don't do is sit there, you know, pounding your knee. Is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? Why aren't they telling me? I hope this goes faster, blah, blah, blah. All you're doing is working yourself up. And so the stoic in you has to go like, relax. This part of the problem you don't control. This isn't up to you. So why are you gonna make yourself suffer in advance? Hey, thanks for watching Daily Stoic. If you want to learn more about stoicism, you can check out some of our other videos here. Subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Keep learning, keep studying, and remember those four stoic virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom.